Is the U.S. government's politics surrounding EVs hindering APTRA's ability to raise capital for production? Biden administration is allegedly slowing down the early stages of the shift to electric cars as a result. People familiar with the scheme claim that the intended regulation change was an election year compromise made to auto bosses and labor groups. But before we continue, if you're enjoying this content, please kindly support this channel by clicking on the like and subscribe button below to subscribe to this channel and to help you to learn of your preferences and enable you receive new video updates every time they are uploaded. Thank you. Let's get going. According to three people familiar with the plan, the Biden administration plans to soften parts of one of its most ambitious climate change strategies. Limits on tailpipe emissions meant to encourage Americans to convert from gas-powered cars to electric vehicles as a way of appeasing automakers and labor unions. These people, who asked to remain anonymous because the regulation has not been finalized, said that the administration would give automakers more time, with a sharp increase in sales not required until after 2030, instead of essentially requiring automakers to rapidly ramp up sales of electric vehicles over the next few years. The administration plans to publish the final rule by early spring. The move comes at a time when President Biden is facing formidable challenges in his quest for re-election and his efforts to combat climate change. He is working to reduce carbon dioxide emissions from gasoline-powered vehicles, which account for the majority of greenhouse gases released by the U.S. While consumer demand has not been as strong as automakers had hoped, potential buyers have been turned off by sticker prices and the relative lack of charging stations. At the same time, Mr. Biden needs cooperation from the auto industry and political support from the unionized auto workers who backed him in 2020, but now worry that an abrupt transition to electric vehicles would cost jobs. Sensing an opportunity, Republican frontrunner and former President Donald J. Trump has pounced on electric vehicles, claiming falsely that they don't work, and accusing auto workers of being lunatics for supporting Joe Biden's policies which he would abolish the first day he returns to the White House. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, proposed the strictest tailpipe emissions regulations ever this spring. Car manufacturers would have to sell a huge number of zero-emission vehicles in a relatively short amount of time to comply with the regulations. The proposed rules were created by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, with the goal of drastically altering the American auto industry by requiring 67% of new car and light-duty truck sales to be electric by 2032, up from 7.6% in 2023. That's still the aim, but as the rules are finalized, administration officials are adjusting the schedule to slow down the rate at which automakers would have to comply, meaning that sales of electric vehicles would rise more gradually through 2030 before needing to spike in the following years. The pace shift is in response to automakers who argue that more time is needed to lower the cost of electric vehicles and establish a nationwide network of charging stations, as well as labor unions who want more time to attempt to unionize the newly opening electric car plants across the nation, especially in the South. Polluting Facilities The Biden administration's move to tighten regulations on fine industrial particles, one of the most prevalent and deadly types of air pollution, led to lawsuits against the Environmental Protection Agency from manufacturers and 24 states. Weaker business rules, new rules governing whether and how public firms must report climate risks and the quantity of greenhouse gas emissions they generate were authorized by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Compared to the original plan, the new rules place less restrictions on businesses. Two narrower climate rules, in response to political and legal realities, President Biden's administration was forced to reevaluate two regulations intended to reduce the emissions warning the planet, one that required gas-burning power plants to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions and the other that set strict limits on tailpipe emissions. However, postponing the rule's strictest requirements could have a negative impact on the environment, given that this past year was the hottest on record. Scientists say every year counts in the government's efforts to prevent the planet from tipping into more deadly and expensive climate disasters. 
Delaying the sharp increase in sales of electric vehicles until after 2030 would still eliminate roughly the same amount of auto emissions as the original proposal by 2055, according to Environmental Protection Agency models. But it would mean the nation would continue to pump auto emissions into the atmosphere in the short run. If U.S. transport emissions don't decline before 2030, you'll have faster warming, stated James Glenn a senior research scholar at Columbia University's Center on Global Energy Policy. Scientists have cautioned that humans may find it difficult to adjust to more frequent and severe storms, floods, fires, heat waves, and other disturbances if average global temperatures rise by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius relative to pre-industrial levels. Senior climate advisor to President Biden, Ali Zaidi, declined to comment on the specifics of the final rule, but stated in an interview that the president's target of having the nation's greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 would still be achieved with the support of Mr. Biden's climate policies and record federal investment in renewable energy. Mr. Zaidi expressed his satisfaction with the way that all of our initiatives, including the regulatory steps, are working together to improve our chances of meeting our 2030 goals and position us for the long run. Even yet, analysts doubt that Mr. Biden will be able to accomplish his two main objectives, which are to cut the nation's greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030 and to completely eradicate them by 2050. Scientists believe that in order for any country to be spared the worst effects of climate change, all countries must attain this aim. Mr. Biden's political alliance and his image as a champion of the middle class have been greatly aided by labor support. This support was put in jeopardy last spring when the Environmental Protection Agency suggested new regulations on tailpipe emissions. Shortly after, United Auto Workers President Sean Fain wrote that the union was not endorsing Mr. Biden's re-election campaign due to concerns with the electric vehicle transition. Given that they require fewer laborers to assemble and that many electric car plants are being developed in places with low union density, the union has been cautious about electric vehicles. The United Auto Workers urged the Biden administration to ease the compliance timeline so that it increases stringency more gradually and occurs over a greater period of time in public comments it filed regarding a proposed rule. Union leaders repeated that request in discussions over the past six months with senior White House officials, including Mr. Zaidi. Biden administration officials stated the union's comments had resonated. In an effort to allay union concerns during the fall strike against Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, Mr. Biden became the first president to join the workers on the picket line. The walkout was sparked in part by worries over the industry's shift to electric vehicles. A few weeks later, the United Vehicle Workers endorsed Mr. Biden, and by early January, the Environmental Protection Agency had submitted the White House a revised version of its vehicle emissions rule with a lengthier time frame. He bought into Biden's vision of all electric vehicles, which require far fewer workers to make each car, but more importantly, are not wanted in large numbers by the consumer, and will all be made in China. Mr. Trump wrote on Truth Social, his social media platform, following the endorsement. Mr. Trump also called Mr. Fain a dope. Professor of Public Policy at the University of Michigan, Barry Rabe, observed that Mr. Trump has emphasized the fear of electric cars that is prevalent in that auto-producing state, one of the few swing states where the election will probably be determined. When Trump visits the state, this is a real question that he raises. What plant am I going to be working in? Mr. Rabe stated, Trump has been very effective in the past at using wedge issues. Despite the fact that the number of electric vehicles sold in the U.S. reached a record 1.2 million last year, growth in this market is slowing down, even if the new laws call for a roughly tenfold increase in sales of these vehicles in only eight years. Although federal tax credits of up to $7,500 are available to purchasers of new electric vehicles, the number of eligible models has decreased from roughly two dozen last year to just 18. One such model is the Ford F-150 Lightning, an all-electric pickup truck with a 200,000-strong waiting list that saw only 24,000 sales last year, far less than the 150,000 Ford had predicted. Even if the number of EV chargers being built is increasing, from over 87,000 in 2019 to over 172,000 last year, 
Analysts predict that by 2030, the country would require more than 2 million chargers to accommodate the rise in electric vehicles that the proposed regulations hope to achieve. Car companies would face billions of dollars in fines annually if the emissions associated with their auto sales exceed the limits set by the new regulations. This worries auto companies, which according to the Center for Automotive Research, a nonprofit organization in Ann Arbor, Michigan, have invested about $146 billion over the past three years in researching and developing electric vehicles. The administration was requested to implement the same slowdown that the United Auto Workers had requested by the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, which is composed of 42 automakers that account for almost 97% of all new automobiles sold in the country. Time is critical, Alliance President John Bozella stated in an interview. Allow the market and supply chains time to adjust, uphold the customer's freedom of choice, and allow additional public charging to occur. The market for early adopters who are usually wealthy coastal residents who have purchased an electric vehicle as a second car is saturated, according to analysts, thus the current lag in electric vehicle sales is to be expected. Senior Vice President of Research at the Center for Automotive Research K. Venkatesh Prasad stated, It may be some time before the larger middle class, middle of the country market is ready to embrace buying plug-in cars. According to Mr. Prasad, it might be simpler to sell a lot more electric cars after 2030. If you're running one of these businesses and you get some extra time, you would use every second. You can do things that allow you to better source components, test out new technologies, battery technology will get cheaper and allow people to drive longer distances, there is more investment in charging infrastructure, and you could start to see more acceptance of this from consumers. He said, There is new technology coming in, prices changing and consumer behavior changing. Some analysts said that the trade-off, relaxing the rules to give auto companies and workers what they want, could be worth it if it helps Mr. Biden win the election. That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Please remember to subscribe to this channel to motivate us to give you rich contents like this. Thanks for watching. See you when the next video is uploaded.